Te madring kila matulunga palamit ya daya modhadiko Maudyang na kanivasin ang bhaya para arvakya riva prartita Nili shambara nila mambara talang jambu palamayayang Tangun changir mambarang param rishan lambo darapatumam Namaste. You know, so-called Buddhism today has very little to do with the Buddha's actual teaching. For example, mostly today, meditation retreat or class means sitting in a group. And while the Buddha did give instructions to his monks, in a group. At the end, he would often say, now go alone to the roots of a tree, the bank of a river, a forest, a field, an abandoned house. Sit down, straighten your spine, your body, fix mindfulness, in front of you and do what has to be done. So what is it that the Buddha wanted us to do? Well, one day Buddha's son Rahul asked him this very question. And that's what today's sutra is about. Bhagavan told him Rahul, suppose there is a bhikshu who is happy being alone in quietude. In a secluded place, he corrects his body, corrects his intention, and sits cross-legged. Without any other thoughts, he fastens his mind on the tip of his nose. 1. When there is a long breath out, he is also aware of the long breath. 2. When there is a long breath in, he is also aware of the long breath. 3. When there is a short breath out, he is also aware of the short breath. 4. When there is a short breath in, he is also aware of the short breath. When there is a cold breath out, he is also aware of the cold breath. 6. When there is a cold breath in, he is also aware of the cold breath. 7. When there is a warm breath out, he is also aware of the warm breath. 8. When there is a warm breath in, he is also aware of the warm breath. 9. He completely contemplates the in-breaths and out-breaths of the body, aware of them all. 10. When there is breathing, he is also aware of its presence. 11. When there is no breathing, he is also aware of its absence. 12. If there is an outbreath conditioned by the mind, he is aware that the outbreath was conditioned by the mind. 13. If there is an in-breath conditioned by the mind, he is aware that the in-breath was conditioned by the mind. Thusly, Rahul, one is able to cultivate the practice of anapanasmriti to eliminate every notion of worry and sorrow, obtain the great fruit, and taste the sweet nectar of immortality. So, this is what has to be done. There are some interesting things to notice here. One is that the Buddha mentions the out-breath first. In other words, a cycle of breath begins with the out-breath, the exhalation, then the in-breath. 
So this is a particular style of breathing known as hung saha. Hung saha. Hung is repeated on the out breath and sa is repeated mentally on the in breath. And actually, these are the sounds, the natural sounds made by the different breaths. And this is discussed in detail in the Tantras. And maybe one of these days we'll do a series on that. <laughs> but the Buddha here simply says, be aware without any other thoughts, mind you, of the quality of the breath. A long breath, a short breath, a warm breath, a cold breath, a natural breath, or a breath conditioned by the mind. Well, what does it mean when the breath is conditioned by the mind? Well, just watch yourself breathing. And you'll notice as soon as you put attention on the breath, the breath changes. That means the breath is being conditioned by the mind. The very fact of attention on the breath changes it. And you'll see that a lot of the time we've been holding the breath, either in or out, while we concentrate on sense objects. But when one concentrates within, well, there are two stages. In the first stage, the mind is still conditioning the breath even though it may become very subtle. Still, because of the attention on the breath, the breath changes. But after some time, and I mean hours, of this kind of practice, something very wonderful happens. For example, when we sleep, breathing continues. I mean, hopefully, <laughs> otherwise we won't wake up. And the reason it continues is because of the autonomic nervous system. That means the part of the body's controlling mechanism that is not subject to consciousness. This is instinctive functions of the body. So when the breathing shifts from deliberate or willful mind-conditioned breathing to automatic breathing as in sleep. That means we're no longer aware of breathing. Breathing just happens. But even so, we can be mindful of the breathing that happens even during sleep or in deep meditation. It doesn't mean that breathing stops, it means that we stop breathing and allow the autonomic uh, system to take over. This is what Ramana Maharshi called sleepless sleep, the state of Turiya, in which there is no mind, there is no ego, no thoughts, no sense objects, only the self with a capital S. And this is what Buddha wants us to do. This method, anapanasati or anupanasmirti, is the method that Buddha himself used to attain enlightenment, sitting under the Bodhi tree. So we have to do the work. It's not that Buddha is going to zap us <laughs> or any guru or any teacher, although there are some people who imagine this happens. But what really happens is if you sit down, like Buddha says, adjust the body, adjust the intention, fix the attention in front of you, in mindfulness. It could be on the tip of the nose or it could be a little farther. It doesn't matter. The point is to fix the attention and watch the breath. Just watch it. Don't try to regulate it to a certain number of 
counts or heartbeats. I mean, there are teachings that talk about these things. But you notice the Buddha doesn't say any of that. He just tells his son, Rahul, sit down and watch the breath and note. Just note, which means notice. Long breath, short breath, hot breath, cold breath, conditioned breath, unconditioned breath. And I can't describe the result of this practice because the result is indescribable. So you have to do it for yourself. That's the only way it's going to happen. And that's the only way you're going to get the result. So do like the Buddha says, go alone. Don't meditate in a group. Don't meditate in a temple or an ashram or what to speak of a yoga classroom, which stinks of sweat from people doing these ridiculous exercises. But go to a pure place, the roots of a sacred tree, not just any tree, a Bodhi tree or a Neem tree, or a place where the Tulsi plants are growing. A sacred place, purified. The bank of a river. In, in those days, the rivers were actually pure. You could even drink the water. What a thought. Or a forest, a field, somewhere where you can count on being left alone for significant periods of time, hours. And just do the breath. Watch the breath. Be with the breath. And you'll surely find that all your worries and anxieties, all your thoughts and dreams, your desires, all your little petty, petty peeves, <laughs> and the contents of the mind in general, gradually subside. Why? You're not giving them attention. Attention is food for the mind. So the Buddha says in another sutra, which maybe we'll go over one day, that the mind is not a suitable platform for meditation. And why is that? The mind is always changing. The mind changes quicker than can be described. In fact, the Buddha admitted, I cannot find a suitable simile to describe how fast the mind changes. And this is the Buddha, the master of similes. <laughs> so if he couldn't find it, that means the mind is completely unreliable is not a platform that we can use to become steady. He says, better to meditate on the body because the body at least remains for some time. And as we recently discussed with Richard Clark, other than consciousness itself, the thing that is always with us is the breath. Even while we're sleeping, we're breathing. So if we use the breath as a platform to develop our awareness and concentrate the attention, then this will lead to amazing results. He says you can get the goal that's beyond all understanding, which means Nibbana, Nirvana. You can enter into Turiya, the highest state of consciousness. So this is what we should do. This is what has to be done, according to the Buddha. We should go to a secluded place. It can even be our own room. And do what has to be done, which is watch and take note of the breath. Anapanasati or Anapanasmriti. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.